since I just updated my studio palette, I thought it would be fun to show you the evolution of my studio palette and as well as a couple of other palettes that I've created along the way. And I've put out all the charts that I have created, that I have records of. So let's get started with that. First one is this palette here. Let's ignore the one underneath because that was just a rough note. But this was my first palette that I put together myself. And all I did, because I didn't know what to buy or what's the right color is or anything, I went to Sekaido, which is a very affordable art supply shop in Japan, because I was in Japan at the time, and just bought colors that I fancied from mostly Holbein and I think some Schminke. Holbein is incredibly cheap over there. You can get a tube of 15 mil for about two, three dollars. So all the ones that says H are Holbein and all the ones that says S, no, it's not Schminke. It's actually Sennelier. Sorry. I think it's Sennelier. Yes, because, hmm, could be Schminke. I did not think of this when I was starting, obviously because I didn't know what I was doing. So it was just like, how many different colors can I cram in? And I was just getting to know different colors and what I like and what I don't like. So there was no color theory behind it or anything. It was just whatever color I fancied. The problem with this though was that it had, I think it was 40 colors, two, two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, it's actually 48 colors, which is way too many colors for me to actually be able to manage and use fully. And I also felt very overwhelmed. So once I had a good go at testing out all these and painting with them, I actually narrowed it down to a smaller selection of colors. And I had this one in a metal palette and these were all half pan size. And what I did was using the same metal palette, but used four pans instead, because I found that I really like painting with bigger brushes and half pans were not good for that, whereas full pans were a little bit better for that. And I narrowed down some of the colors from this lot to cut that I really liked. And I think these are almost all Holbein except for a couple of colors. Winsor Newton's Hook is Green, Winsor Newton Gold Gouache. At the time, I didn't know that you're supposed to use gouache like from the tube rather than dry on the pan. It was still not based on any color theory. It was just the colors I liked. I started with yellow. I didn't even know like warm and cool primary colors or anything. I just pick the colors I liked, but I think it did pretty well. I can see that I have a cool yellow and a warm yellow, a warm red and a cool red round here. I'm still a big fan of cooler reds than warmer reds and also have some blues here. Here is a warm blue and around here, it's, it's not so blue. I think I'm missing a cool blue here, as well as a little bit of neutral colors, but I've always painted with bright colors rather than neutral colors, so they were in little half bands. And then after that, I took a course on color theory by Stephen Quiller, which you can find online. You can buy it on DVD, you can take online courses. I was trying to get to grips with color theory and Quiller himself has this palette. It's his very custom made palette and it's in the color wheel, which is great, but they're really, really expensive to buy. And I was not going to spend that much importing because at the time you couldn't get them in the UK. You can nowadays, but back then you couldn't and it was ceramic and it was super expensive, both the cost as well as the shipping to UK. And I was like, it's ceramic, I don't want a broken. So I didn't want to do it. So what I did was take the same colors, I think pretty much the same colors, and put it into one of my normal Jackson's palette. So you can see we have Cad Yellow Light, Naples Yellow, Cadmium Yellow Mid, which is over here, Cadmium Yellow Deep, which is over here, Cadmium Yellow Orange, yeah, that's cadmium yellow orange, permanent orange. And I didn't have the exact colors that he had because I think he has his own brand colors. So I just got the ones that had 
the same name or as close as possible to it. And this had 28 colors. This holds 28 colors. So I was managed to squeeze all the colors in around the palette. And this is where I started to organize the palette around a color wheel and have a little bit of color theory behind it. And this is also when I came up with the idea of labeling the complementary colors. Obviously this palette is not my idea, but I found it really hard to figure out right which color was complementary because here it's the complementary colors are supposed to be opposite each other, but I didn't have that luxury of being able to just go oh yeah it's here and here so I needed a way to still keep track of the complementary colors there it was uh one two three four five six pairs so I was like okay I'm gonna label this a and then bracket a b bracket b oh, at this time I was actually just labeling it b without the bracket c c d d e e f f and that made it easier for me to know okay i'm using this color i need to use this color for neutralizing it after i played around with this it had a lot of colors that really didn't call to me because these were based on stephen quiller's colors so what i did was i experimented a bit and change this into colors that I liked and you can see here that it's the beginning of what became my studio palette and it has things like Shemeke Ultramarine Violet, Ultramarine Blue, Aurelium Permanent Yet. I don't have that anymore. What else? Scarlet Lake, Queen Rose, I just took out Queen Violet, the Thalo Blue, Thalo Turquoise, but it also had colours like Thalo Green, which I never use, and Permanent Green 1, which I don't use at all, as well as other colours. I was just exploring what colours I like, like Antwerp Blue, which is a lovely colour, I don't know why I took it out or I never used it, and Quinacridone Burnt Orange, because this was before I learned to make colors with transparent red oxide this was before we did that daniel smith's comparison episode which i will link up here where i learned that the transparent red oxide from daniel smith is a really really good mixing color but it is the formative years of that palette this was in 16th of february 2018 and then couple of months later, on the 22nd of March of the same year, I updated the palette again. So this is part two. And you can see that I've added more colors to it. And I actually removed some of the neutral colors. And this is when ultramarine violet ends up here and ultramarine blue ends up here. And it's actually still the same now because if you didn't know this, Schminke colors, if you fill a well, you're not gonna be able to get that paint out again. So I've just got stuck with these two colors being there and all the other colors moving around there ever since. But I'm actually quite happy with those colors being there, which is why I've put it in the same place again in my brand new palette. So we have things like Aurelian Permanent Yellow Light, Quinacridone Gold, which I don't have anymore, Quinacridone Burnt Orange. So it was a little bit more finding homes for some of these colors that I was testing out, as well as adding colors like Indanthrone and the Manganese Blue Hue over here because I heard that they're good for doing skies with, so I was testing out. So that was version two. And then I don't know why I didn't do it like this, but I have version three which was done on the 1st of August 8, 2018. So this 2018 first half of it, I was really playing around with the ideal palette for myself. And you can see that the trans red oxide makes it in because I did that Daniel Smith episode, realized it's a good one. I also swapped out some of the colors to things like vermilion hue rather than brilliant orange because I preferred this color this was too orangey for me and if you know me I'm not the biggest fan of orange so I've taken out things like queen gold and I think permanent yellow orange I was never using it brilliant orange was never using it I threw in queen coral because again I discovered the queen coral is a lovely lovely color and what else oh yes rose of ultramarine oh it was here already as well 
I was mad into Rose of Ultramarine at the time, so that obviously made it. But a few of the colours had left the palette, such as the Antwerp Blue, as well as the Permanent Green 1. I swapped it out for Sap Green. Uh, the Magnet Blue hue didn't make it. And then finally, if you haven't seen the previous episode of this, where I updated this, we are now to here. There isn't a record between this and this because there wasn't a big overhaul. All I did was add some neutral colors where there was space and that was about it. And then if you remember from the previous episode of the Studio Palette, I'll link up here. I removed all the neutral colors because I was just defaulting to Holbein because I didn't know which colors I would like, whereas I am now giving these Naples Yellow, Sepia and Payne's Grey a go instead of, I think it was Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna and Burnt Umber, as well as I added Hooker's Green because I've done the core series and I fell in love with the Hooker's Green, as well as I added the Oprah because I thought it'd be nice and fun and see how that goes as well. So that is the transformation of my studio palette, but I do have other couple of charts of some other palettes that I've made in the past. Obviously I've made a lot more than these, but these are what I have records of. And this, if you remember, and I will link a video up here of this episode, was when I made the Monster palette with the massive Mugello huge one that holds like 50 colors. I threw in my basic palette colors as well as all these more jewel tone and Primatech kind of colors. I never used the palette. I know it's really sad, but it's so big, even with my large studio table, it's just a really impractical palette. I do not recommend it to anybody. I mean, I've seen other people use it and it's great. They enjoy it. They enjoy the large surface area. But for me personally, I just, it just didn't work for me. But this was fun to make and fun to put together. I do miss these colors though. So I might make like a second palette. I don't know. I always say I might make a second palette and I do make them and then I don't use them. So yeah, we'll see. And then another one that I made, this is Otter's Choice and I'm pretty sure that this was to do with the Holbein's primary set of colors and they had really weird range. I don't know if this was in a video or a stream. I'll look for that video and so you can see all the ideas behind this palette. But this was a split primary palette that I would personally choose if I'm just selecting from Holbein colors. And I had Aurelian, Permanent Yellow Deep, Queen Magenta, Scarlet Lake, Ultramarine Blue, and Thalo Blue Yellow Shade. And we just did the color mixes with this. I love the purples you can get with this as well as the, yeah, I like the oranges there. Another one, this was a very early one. I think this was actually my first YouTube video about watercolor at all on this channel. This was a Kylie Holman palette for a class that she has online and I made the palette for that. And I remember, I think I was at my mom's in Japan and I was in my bedroom there and I have a little, little tiny study. It's like two meters by like one and a half meters, tiny little thing, but it was filming on that, I think, and it had really bad light. Maybe I should do a reacting to one of my old videos at some point. And then finally, I have this new palette layout. It's phrased and Windsor Newton palette. So I think I tried to do a Windsor Newton palette as well. So that is it for my palette history and I'm just going to put the final version of on there for you to see where I am now. And let's pull out the one that was the very first one to see where we got to. I think the journey I went on was one, to put some colour theory behind both my colour choices and how I lay out the palette. And two, narrow down the colors to the colors I really like and not overwhelm myself with choice. And three, learning the purposes of all the colors so that 
when I want something, then I know exactly what colour to go for. I am still contemplating taking out Permanent Yellow Deep if I don't use it. I'm going to keep an eye out on how much I use this one, as well as Scarlet Lake, Queen Acredon Coral, and Vermilion Hue. Actually, I use Vermilion Hue a lot. So yeah, these three colours are on the watch list as to whether I'm going to keep it or not. I will, of course, next time I update my palette, do another video updating the palette, and then we can see which colours remain and which colours go. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was interesting to you and hopefully useful to you guys in your watercolour palette journey and developing the right palette for you guys. I'm sorry about the noise of screaming kids outside. I am going to go before it gets too loud. Do let me know in the comments down below what your palette journey was and what things you've really liked about adding into your palette, like the thoughts behind it. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will speak to you guys in the next video. Bye!